I think that I've, like, when I fought Norman Park, I feel like the performance that I had was a great performance, but the holes in my game were was the wrestling, of course. And since then, I've gone away to AK, I've trained with the best guys in the world, doing wrestling, of course. And yeah, my wrestling has gone a little bit better, but you have to think of it in the dynamic of you know, I'm not going to become an NCAA wrestler within three months in AKA, you know, it takes years and years and years to get to that level. So yeah, my wrestling is a lot better, but it's my anti-wrestling is a lot better, you know. I can plant a seed and I can avoid wrestlers a lot better and I can deal with them a lot better. And that's, you know, part of what you're doing over there. You're going to get bulls just charging at you all the time and you better get used to underlaying them past you or you're going to get smashed, you know. So I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but uh, my three months in AK was all about Miles Price. It was all about me, you know, improving my game and becoming a better athlete and nothing to do with all the, the stigma that was around it. When I look at Norman and Peter, I see two different approaches to a competition. I see two different skill sets and attributes. But I see Norman as a higher level athlete, of course, because he's been through the uh, UFC roster and he was like, you know, well known all over the world. Like, I mean, Norman is a, was regarded as one of the top prospects and hot prospects going into the UFC for a long time. And, uh, and he still is, you know, he got fighter of the year this year in severe MMA. So he's a great athlete and I feel like I dominated him striking. He was demoralized after the fight and jujitsu wise, I did well as well. It's just my wrestling let me down a little bit. and. Uh, it might not be the most exciting fight because it's a Norman Park fight, but uh, I performed very well and I learned from my mistakes. And uh, in comparison to, to two athletes, I feel like Norman's a, um, a better fighter. Of course, he's a better fighter, but he's a uh, Peter. He, 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 gives, he gives you a, a couple of different things to think about. Like, you know, he has got quite slick striking uh, as well, so. Norman does uh, a lot of his talking in the cage, you know, not outside the cage. He didn't bombard me too much like Peter has, you know. Peter's calling me a rat and a traitor, and you know, he's entitled to his opinion. It doesn't affect me. It's completely, it's, com it's understandable, actually. I think that he, he's, uh, of course, he's going to say things like that. Like, you know, I think it's a little bit hypocritical, and I think that he's being a bit of a groupie by saying those things, but. You know, that's just the way it is. Norman did his fighting in the cage with me and me and Norman had a bit of back and forth beef. That's because I think Norman's a bit bitter as a person towards competition sometimes, but I feel like that he's a good guy and we shook hands after the fight. And unfortunately, I don't know if Peter will have the same attitude with me after the fight, but I hope to think that he'd be man enough to shake my hand after I get the victory. Milestone event, Bellator 200, London. I am extremely excited to be the uh, part of this new wave of the Bellator scene in Europe uh, with the new organizers within the corporation and I feel like that within the lightweight division I'm going to be a threat and I'm starting off with a bang. I'm the first one pretty much like, you know, to be in the Irish circuit, to be in a co-main event and uh, what a co-main event to have like and I feel like within I'm going to be a very active athlete this year and I'm going to get a lot of really noticeable fights in. I'm looking forward to shining and taking this opportunity to it's 100% till it's full. I'm going to take it and I'm going to come in with the victory come February 23rd. I feel like the difference is between my last fight and now, like, I, I do live a lifestyle of being a martial artist, but uh, I do take a little bit of time off here and there, and I mightn't take my training as serious as what I should usually in the past, you know? Well, whereas in now, literally the second I finished the Norman Park fight, I was training straight away, went straight to America, trained for three months, and then I'm back here training for this fight, so. I haven't taken any time off pretty much like that that counts a lot in the consistency as well I've taken time off as in like I might take two or three days off a week sometimes you know because when you're con tra consistently training like I do now you know like you need to do that <laughs> I 
I feel like when I was in the USA, I done a lot of weight, I done a lot of wrestling, of course. So I have bulked up when I was while I was over in the US doing my camp, and uh, I want to be a little bit more appealing to the US market, you could say. You know, I'd like I want to end up competing over there, especially in San Jose in uh, the headquarters area. You know, I was at that show at the Gay Garden Sassy in the McDonald card and um, talking to a lot of guys there and I'm for sure going to be a bigger, bulkier figure going in uh, making my debut over in the US after this performance on February 23rd. I don't look at social media very much, uh, but I do hear people telling me about uh, things that he says and the one-liners he comes out with, you know, and rehearses at night and whatever. I'm sure he uh, puts a lot of thought into these one-liners he does on social media and these uh, little articles he does to make himself feel better. But uh, I do feel like that, you know, he calls me a traitor and a rat and he says that he's been four and a half hours without being finished or stopped, which is admirable, but, you know, it's taken him four and a half hours to get a stoppage himself, you know, like he, he puts the crowd to sleep a lot of the time, you know, and, and his showstopper, he should really change that nickname because it does not suit him really and his persona and his fight style. Uh, you know, he should give that nickname to me, but I have Splinter, that's a better one, I feel. <laughs> You could somewhat say Peter's a little bit of a journeyman going from promotion to promotion and getting fights here and there. But in fairness to him, he has fought some good competition over in Russia. He's done a good job there. And uh, But I don't think they're on my level. Not when it comes to striking. And I think that they're very well suited matchups for Peter as well. You know, they just weren't there striking for Peter at all. The, you know, and I feel like that my consistency within Bama just showed can just showed just that show consistency. And I was willing to fight any of the tough guys within the promotion. You know, like Kane Musa, Mario Saeed, and even SBG's Phil Rayburn. Like you know, he was a good guy, world champion kickboxer, and uh, he was a good matchup as well. So. I, I pick the hard fights, I always do, and I feel like um, Peter's run into a hard fight now. If we get deep into that third round and we get deep into the trenches, I hope you haven't left too much in the cage with Connor because I know that he's given you some hard spars over the years, and I hope he's I hope he's paid you very well as well over the years because I know you've given a lot to him in that cage and in those training rooms. So, you know, we'll see what you got left in you when it comes to the third round if we get there. Uh, when it's deep in the trenches and deep into the waters, you know, we'll see how far, we'll see who can dig the deepest there in that moment. Look, Peter, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's going to be a great fight come February 23rd. For me, it's, it's an absolute honor to fight someone of your caliber, you know, you're an elite athlete and you're up there with the elite up in SBG and Conor McGregor and you're his main sparring partner and you have it all easy up there and like I'm just a I'm just a personal trainer down here I only train maybe once a day if I can you know and uh, I just tip away at my personal training you know and I feel like that you know if, you know you, you you probably think you're going to get a finish and you are a completely different level to where I'm at like well you know if if you don't get that first round finish like does that count as a win to me? Like, you know, is that a victory for me? Like, what are you going to do if it gets into the second round or the third round? Like, you know, it might get a little bit hairy then, you know, your reputation's going to crumble underneath you, you know? Like, you have a very high reputation. You have that blue tick on Instagram. You have a lot of people looking at you and a lot of, the Ireland is on your shoulders now, apparently, and you're against the rat and the traitor, so. Let's see how, how, the pre how you fare up to the pressure on the night of having Ireland on your shoulders because I'm representing the martial arts way and, the, and I feel like I'm the poster boy for what the way martial arts should be, you know, for the good guys, you're the bad guys. You're Cobra Kai and I'm, I'm Mr. Miyagi or Master Splinter, whichever one you want to call me. <laughs> this man stands six feet one inches tall and weighed in at 155.8 pounds. He has a record of eight wins, six losses, and zero draws. Representing Kill Kenny Ireland, Miles Price. Just a little shout out to Scott Coker. Um, I'm not going to let you down for this co-main event. It's going to be a great fight. You're going to see what a, a proper performance is all about. Getting in and giving the fans exactly what they pay for. Just those entertaining, high-level fights and and 
more than likely a high level finish in whatever way I see fit, whatever opening comes I'll take and it won't be my last co-main event and down the line I'll be main eventing your shows and it's going to be great in the US in San Jose and I'll be there shaking your hand having a coffee in the headquarters next time I'm over at AK. <laughs>